Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another real-world webinar from Perforce. My name is Randy DeSau. I'm the Technical Marketing Manager at Perforce. Joining me today is Jason Hammond, the Director of Product Management at TechExcel. Today, we're going to be talking about using ALM tools, Perforce and DevSuite, to achieve traceability. Uh, now, ALM and traceability are certainly nothing new in the software industry, but today we're going to be looking at some very concrete ways to actually achieve traceability using these two tools working together. So before we get started, we're just going to launch a quick poll. Uh, we're just curious what development methodology you use now, whether it's uh, Agile, uh, any one of the Agile flavors, uh, Waterfall, a hybrid approach, or if you're not even really sure. And uh, Jason, while the folks are answering that, maybe you could just let us know what uh, what's the most common uh, development methodology you're seeing out there right now. Sure. Uh, you know, we what we hear a lot from our customers is that uh, they have a lot of interest in Agile and they're looking at actually implementing an Agile process, uh, but yet they still have either legacy projects or or they still need some data. Uh, that lends itself maybe more to a more waterfall approach. So a lot of times we're seeing a hybrid approach. Yeah, I think that's pretty consistent with what we're seeing as well. A lot of folks are using Agile pretty successfully for some teams, but haven't quite yet managed to roll it out to the entire organization. Uh, or maybe they're uh, having some problems because they have distributed teams and they're having problems with the collaboration pieces. So uh, it looks like the results, uh, looks like about half the folks are using uh, a hybrid approach, about a quarter using Agile, uh, under 10% using Waterfall, you know, some of the older approaches, and about a fifth really aren't sure or maybe just aren't involved in that. So I'll go ahead and close the poll. And now we'll move on to the next part. So again, today we're actually talking about ALM, Application Lifecycle Management. So ALM helps us keep track of our application development, what we're making, what features and, and bug fixes are going into the product, uh, the schedule, are we meeting our, our milestones, uh, and are we actually producing what we said we produce? And of course, those are some of the same questions that Agile development methodologies help us try to answer. And traceability, one of the key Agile principles, uh, is also a key part of using these tools successfully. It really helps us answer these questions. And so that's some of what we're going to be looking at today. So just a quick introduction to Perforce. Uh, Perforce makes a fast, scalable version control or software configuration management tool. It's available on uh, pretty much any platform for any type of project. It can version any type of data and used by customers in a wide variety of industry segments. Uh, one last little bit of housekeeping before I turn it over to Jason. I forgot to mention at the beginning, we will be having time for Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the question panel and go to webinar at any time. Uh, today, we'll be uh, looking at a few different ways that Perforce helps with traceability and transparency, uh, looking at status of the project as a whole, an individual sprint or iteration, and then estimating the cost of tasks. And with that, I will turn it over to Jason. All right, hello everybody. Um, before we talk about ALM and traceability and transparency, I want to tell you a little bit about TechXL. Um, so TechXL was founded in, in 95, so we've been around for quite some time. Uh, we have about 1,500 customers in 43 countries, and people tend to use our solutions because one, you can configure them using a point and click configuration tool, uh, so no additional programming or scripting is needed. And then we also have functionality for multi-site support for distributed teams, and we're in the process of developing both iOS and Android apps um, to utilize our tools. We have two main product lines. One is on the IT service management side, so help desk, customer support. Um, and then we also have DevSuite, which is our application lifecycle management um, platform. Today we're going to be talking about DevSuite and specifically how DevSuite, um, as it's being used with Perforce, can help add that extra transparency to the traceability that DevSuite provides. So DevSuite is a ALM platform that is made up of different best-of-breed modules uh, that can be deployed as standalone solutions or bundles. So let's kind of revisit the question that 
questions that Randy posed at the beginning of the webinar um, and, and talk about how we're going to cover each of these. And, and what I'm going to do in, in my portion of the presentation is I'm going to, we're going to take a look at each of those questions and talk about how you can answer them using an ALM solution. So how you can uh, determine what you're making by using requirements, uh, keep an eye on the schedule using planning, track your progress using implementation tracking, and finally confirming that you really made what you thought you were making through testing, feedback, and validation. So let's start off with what are we making? So in order to really keep track of what we're making, you have to use some element that's going to allow you to determine that. So we like to have users define requirements. Um, sometimes people would call them stories. Um, and you can quantify your project by one, defining what requirements you might have received from customers. Those could also be internal requirements you might have. We also allow you to define additional elements that you can link to those requirements called specifications to represent the implementation details for each of those requirements. So while a requirement may need to be implemented on multiple platforms, perhaps there's something different you need to do to implement them on each of those platforms. Each of the specifications you define can be linked to multiple requirements. And of course, a single requirement could be linked to multiple specifications too. And finally, another thing to consider when you're quantifying that project to begin with is what defects that have been found in a previous version need to be fixed as part of that project. So anything that you know is pushed out from a previous release, you will also want to include that in there too. So to graphically look at kind of how that will look, um, we can have our requirements here. Maybe they're customer requirements or internal requirements. Maybe they're things related to performance we want to track. Um, and then we can have a level of specifications that are used to really kind of be a, a handshake between the people writing the requirements and the folks implementing them uh, to kind of explain how you would go about implementing them. The right side of the screen is really the implementation, tracking, project planning, and testing that we're going to cover in the next couple slides. In terms of defining those requirements, DevSuite offers a few different ways that you can do that. One is you can define requirements as wikis. So this is just a screenshot of how you might want to create a wiki related to a certain requirement that you may have. You could add in screenshots and sections and link to other external documents that you might want to have in a knowledge base. We also allow you to define requirements through document import. So Word, for example, or PDF, or you can also define requirements in kind of a traditional dialogue with fields and drop downs and such. Once we have defined what our requirements are and specifications, the next thing we're going to want to do is figure out when are we going to make this and who is going to make it. So to do that, whether you're utilizing an agile methodology or something more traditional, one great way to keep track of all the things you want to do in a project is to utilize a backlog. So a backlog is basically a list of all of the things that you want to accomplish in a particular product, and we would call that the product backlog. And then you can also have sprint or iteration backlogs to track specific time periods where you want to implement them. From a more traditional standpoint, you might want to talk about milestones in the same sort of context. Now you can groom that product backlog so that the high priority items are at the top, and maybe they're high priority because you, you know, it's something you need to bring to market quickly, or maybe it's for an important customer. I can then, once I prioritize that backlog, I can schedule my sprints and iterations or create a project plan. Now, DevSuite offers a couple different tools that you can utilize in, pl in planning that project plan or sprint and iteration planning. You can utilize both Gantt charts or storyboards um, to do that. When you're using either the Gantt chart or the storyboard, you'll be able to assess the resource load and create some basic early estimates so that from a timing standpoint, you know how long you expect the whole project to take. So here's kind of a view of what you might see in a backlog. You could have a list of all of the items you want to implement, and maybe that's for the whole product backlog, or maybe you want to time it to kind of specific time periods um, you know, for a specific sprint or iteration backlog. 
That same backlog data that you might define here can also be viewed in a Gantt chart view also, so that you can see that for that product backlog that you've defined exactly when uh, you expect those sprints to end and when you know the whole project might end if you're actually planning out that far. So once we've created a plan either through planning sprints or maybe milestones in a more traditional approach, the next thing we want to do, and this is really where Perforce is going to come into play, is start tracking our progress. So to start tracking your project, each of those specs or stories that we've assigned to a, a sprint or iteration is going to need to have a task to track. So each committed spec and story will have an initial time estimate that you might have, and then we'll let you create tasks that can be used to actually track the development um, and implementation of those items. We can track iteration progress with daily stand-up meetings in an agile process, and also with a burndown report. You can also track your progress using the Gantt charts, too, that we showed in the previous slide. Um, the one nice thing about implementing using a tool where the, the project plan is actually integrated with the implementation tracking is that task data will actually populate the actual time values. And this is one nice thing that will happen with Perforce too, is not only are you going to be tracking the time that it takes to implement it, but you can actually tie some of those implementation items to code check-ins and completion so that you really have not only the traceability of knowing someone has said they've completed it, but you also have the transparency to see those actual code check-ins too. So this is just a view of how each of the stories and specifications I have can be linked to one or more tasks that are actually being implemented by the development team. Each of those implementation tasks will go through a workflow that you define. And that workflow can include steps that may be actually happening in Perforce also. So that as an item is implemented, we can actually have um, you know, code check-ins also linked to specific states that are in that workflow too. You can track that progress by viewing it in a burndown report so that you can see how many items or how much time we expect to have and are we you know, actually meeting that you know, by tracking our progress along the chart. Now, in parallel with that implementation effort, is also going to be an effort to make sure along the way that we are actually making what we intended to make. And this is really going to be covered through testing and validation. So the test team can take those very same uh, requirements and specifications that we've created and are the basis for our implementation item and they can utilize those to create their test cases and also test cycles that they're going to be running. You can run regression tests to ensure that previous functionality hasn't been broken. And then you can also run test cycles that include items that are specifically linked to your requirements and specs to make sure that the new functionality has not only been implemented, but it's at the quality that you expect. Optionally, you can decide to run some test coverage uh, multiple times if you think there's particular areas that are at risk or, you know, more important than others. Now, using Dev Suite and specifically the testing piece of it, Dev Test, I can plan all of my testing um, based on the same sprints and iterations that I have, uh, you know, set up in the planning piece of it. I can also plan those that test coverage just based on looking at my requirements list too. We utilize a wizard-based scheduling system that allows you to actually see um, that list of requirements and specs and to assign out tests that correspond to them. Now, as you run those tests, it's probably pretty likely that you may find a bug or two, and the bugs that actually are found will go through their own workflow, and that is also tied into the Perforce check-in so that you can actually see that not only it was a bug submitted by the QA team based on a specification that you may have been working on a requirement, um, but also we can see that it's been fixed by development and a particular code, the code has been checked in, and now that item is ready to be verified by the QA team. From within DevTrack, 
I can see for each bug, I can see the specific perforce changes that are linked to that bug. And at the end of the day, you know, what we're hoping to show through all of this is that for each of the requirements or specifications I have, I'm able to see a corresponding link QA test that shows me not only was a test assigned out to confirm that that you know, requirement was implemented, but I can also hopefully see them all pass on the most recent uh, path so that we can confirm that they've actually been implemented and are the, of the quality that we would expect. And with that, I think we're going to open up another poll question, and then Randy is going to talk um, about how Perforce adds the transparency to the traceability that, that um, DevSuite provides. Yep, that's right. Thanks, Jason. So our next uh, poll question, after we've seen where DevSuite can take you from requirements down to tests and issues, uh, where does traceability break down for you if you are having problems with it? Is it uh, towards the business side where you're trying to deal with requirements and the product backlog? Uh, is it towards the developer side where you're looking at uh, issues and defects and, and source code? Is it maybe with the QA team trying to link uh, test cases? Or are, are things actually working well for you right now? And uh, Jason, where have you seen people have the most problems? You know, the, we see the most problems um, on the requirement side, certainly. So a lot of people have very mature um, processes as it relates to implementation tracking, bug tracking, and even testing. Um, but, but one of the challenges we see a lot is on really getting those requirements defined, getting them out of the work documents that many organizations use, and then being able to track implementation and testing items as they relate to the requirements. Yeah, I think that's what I've seen as well. There always seems to be this disconnect between the tools that the business folks use, whether, like you say, it's just Word documents or spreadsheets and, and the tools that the development and QA teams uh, work with. And I know a lot of our customers are pretty concerned about the business side because if you're dealing with any kind of regulatory issues, you know, if you make medical devices or uh, you make anything that's subject to uh, you know, ISO regulations or government compliance rules, you've got to be able to tra trace those uh, source code check-ins all the way back up to you know, some, some business justification, some requirement. Absolutely. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, most people, about almost 50% are having problems at the business side with the requirements and the product backlog. About a third having problem with QA, and again, that's not uncommon. I think there's probably that disconnect with the tool sets there. And uh, under 10% are having problems with developers. So like you said, I think a lot of developers do have a pretty well-established uh, tool chain. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and close the poll and continue with the broadcast. So I'm going to pick up where Jason left off. So again, he showed you how DevSuite will help you track the business requirements down through test cases and defects, and he showed you how that can start translating into perforce jobs and check-ins. And so I'm, not, I'm going to pick up from there and talk about some of the other ways that perforce helps you with traceability and transparency. Next slide. So of the three areas I'm going to talk about, the first is gaining some visibility, some transparency into project status. Um, so if you're looking at the stream graph, which is uh, Perforce's new branching visualization tool, uh, you can actually get some visibility into whether, say, bug fixes that you're tracking on a release have already been merged down into development chains, or excuse me, development branches. So that helps you keep track uh, not only of uh, you know, what bug a QA person might have filed, but whether that bug fix has been propagated all the right places or not. And of course, you can also see what other users are working on, which is a really nice way to avoid stepping on each other's toes. Next slide. Now, code review is another uh, fairly important part of some people's workflows. Uh, in terms of traceability, uh, if you're trying to, like a year after a, a change was made, try to analyze the entire context of how that change was made, capturing the code review, whether it was formal or informal, can be an important part of that workflow. And there's a lot of code review tools that you can put into this tool set that Perforce integrates with. And depending on your needs, you can make that either an enforced or optional part of the workflow. Next slide. 
Now, continuous integration, of course, if you're using Agile, you're probably using CI. Uh, continuous integration is actually all about transparency and traceability. So trying to show you the health of a branch uh, and make it very visible whether things are building, whether test cases are succeeding or not. And of course, Perforce integrates with pretty much all the, the good uh, CI tools out there, whether it's Electric Commander, Cruise Control, Bamboo, Hudson, pretty much any of the standard tools. Next slide. Now, from the sprint status point of view, uh, again, as Jason mentioned, uh, Perforce and DevSuite integrate very nicely together. Uh, so as you're progressing through a sprint or development cycle, you can quickly get a bird's eye view of how far along in the sprint you are, how many of these tasks have actually been done, just based on what the developers have already checked in. Next slide. From the Perforce side, of course, you can also trace back if you're using this type of job-based integration that we have with DevTrack. And you can actually query for some branch or some uh, source code module. You can find out why changes are being checked into that part of the repository. And that's a really nice way to figure out, oh, well, we're, there's a lot of code churn because QA is filing a lot of bugs there, or we got a, a bunch of new feature requirements in at the last minute. Next slide. And the last area I wanted to touch on briefly, uh, which really goes back to the whole idea of, of transparency, is estimating the cost of tasks. Now, whether you're using Agile or a hybrid methodology, uh, the estimation is a key part of the project planning. So, of course, in, in DevSuite, you can capture the requirements, uh, the product backlog with business value. But the other side of that coin is how much will it actually cost us to implement some of these tasks? So you have to consider both pieces of information while you're doing your project planning. And that's always a difficult thing to do, but Perforce has some information that can help you out. So as you use Perforce over time, you're accumulating information in Perforce's database that you can break down and analyze to see, for instance, for the database module in your code, uh, when you get a bug or a new feature request for that part of the code, how many check-ins does it take to implement it? How many files are modified? How many lines of code are changed? Those types of metrics can help you come up with time and eventually cost estimates. And of course, you can also cross-reference that against the data that's kept in DevSuite. Next slide. Now, this information is all there. The question is, how do you extract it? And we have a tool called P42DB that actually puts this into a relational database. Next slide. And once it's in a database like MySQL or SQL Server, uh, of course, you can run ad hoc SQL queries, or you can generate some more formal reports with BERT or Crystal Reports or some kind of reporting tool. So as part of your, uh, your product backlog estimation, you can go in and run these reports and say, okay, here's a set of requirements for the database module. Let's run this report against Perforce database and see how many, uh, how many files do we usually have to change when we go in and start messing around with that part of the code? Next slide. So that's uh, bringing us to the end of the webinar. So again, uh, transparency, traceability, and ALM are, are nothing new. Uh, but today what we hopefully showed you is how to actually achieve those using DevSuite and Perforce working together. So using these ALM tools, uh, you can establish the traceability link from a high-level business requirement all the way down to the low-level uh, daily file check-ins done in Perforce. And that information helps give you transparency, which helps you make better decisions and ultimately helps you uh, more, be more successful in your project management. Next slide. So that uh, brings us to the end of the webinar. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we are going to have a uh, Q&A session now, so please go ahead and submit your questions to the question window. And uh, on the next slide, we do also have some contact points, so if you have any questions down the road, you can contact us via any of these means. Uh, so first uh, question, um, how well do, do these tools work for a, uh, a distributed team? So Jason, you want to uh, have a crack at that one? Yeah, certainly. Um, so there, we have a couple different options in terms of how distributed teams can can utilize DevSuite. Um, we have a, you know, it, it, it is a 
web client based system so that users can connect remotely uh, via the web and use their browser, which is a great way for you know, teams to interact. The other piece of it too is a lot of our tools or most of our tools are using real-time data, uh, particularly on the QA side, if you have testers running um, tests, maybe, maybe outsourced testers or something like that, back in your office you can actually see real-time results and, and know exactly how the, the project is progressing um, without needing to have a phone call or exchange emails or such. We also have a distributed team version of DevSuite coming out that has actual database replication so that you can have each site can have its own local database that you can connect locally using uh, some of the thick clients that we have also if you want. Yeah, I'll just add that I know when you're talking particularly about agile development methodologies which, which really put a, a focus on uh, team communication. Um, it's really, really difficult to do distributed Agile without an effective set of tools. Uh, Agile always claims to be fairly agnostic about which particular tools you use, uh, but there's been a few case studies done that show that in order to support distributed Agile with teams in different parts of the world, you really have to have the tools that let those teams collaborate and communicate as if they were co-located. And you know, certainly things like DevSuite, where you can get your product backlog off the sticky notes uh, and into DevSpec, uh, and tools like Perforce, which of course can you know, let you work transparently no matter where people are in the world. Uh, those tools are gonna be pretty essential for doing uh, effective Agile in, in a distributed environment. So let's see, next question. Um, uh, Oh, here's another good one about Agile, actually. Um, how would uh, product owners and scrum masters fit into this picture? Uh, and Jason, I'll take that over to you, because I think the product owners would probably be more concerned with the, uh, the dev spec part of the equation. Yeah, well, we actually have a couple different ways of approaching that. So as I mentioned kind of at the beginning of, of the, the webinar, because DevSuite is modular, if you want to have a full-blown requirements management process and you want to track them in, in dev spec using the, the wiki-based requirements, you can certainly do that. And then a product owner would actually interact with a couple different, uh, you know, of the views in dev suite. We also have kind of a lightweight approach that you can utilize too, where just from the task tracking view in dev track, you can create stories that are standalone items that can then have the implementation tasks linked to them. Um, so it really will depend on how formalized you want your requirements uh, management, you know, program to be. And uh, in either case, you're still going to have the same traceability you would have with, um, you know, Perforce in terms of the, the code check-ins that relate to the implementation items and the testing. Okay. Uh, let's see another question. Um, what parts of the organization would actually use these tools? Uh, and I think that's a fairly easy one to answer, actually. I think the answer is pretty much the entire organization would, would touch some part of this tool set. Um, and, you know, as Jason was just talking about, the product owners would probably be concerned with the product backlog and, and dev spec. QA would probably use dev track and, and dev test. And, of course, uh, developers and anybody who needs to look at the source code would be using the course. So, it really does span the entire organization, which is what you want, actually. You don't want the organization using uh, different sets of tools and not communicating with each other. Absolutely. The big benefit is having the teams communicating with each other. Uh, here's an interesting question. Um, can you explain further what the benefit of being able to trace back to the original requirements can offer in Agile Studio? Uh, well, it's really part of the core Agile process, well, actually let me talk specifically about Scrum a little bit. You know, in Scrum you have the, the product backlog items that are used in estimation, and those are where you actually derive your tasks for the sprint. And of course, in, in Agile and in Scrum, you always have to know how you're, you have to agree on what done means. And it's impossible to do that, really, if you can't trace back to what the original product backlog request was. You know, in other words, if you don't know what the user really wanted or what the business stakeholder really wanted, you're never going to really be sure that you're done. So I say in Agile, it's, it's, it's very, very important to be able to, you know, really understand and always be aware of what those original uh, business 
uh, probably backlog items were. Absolutely, and, and just want to add too that especially with Agile, um, because you're taking out a lot of that pre-planning, uh, long-term planning that you would have with Waterfall, uh, you know, you're you're operating on a much shorter timeline, and it so it's really essential to understand what you're making um, as you move forward because the timelines are all compressed. Okay, so I think that's actually. Uh, about as much time as we have for today. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, if, you get, if you have any further questions, there's some contact information up on the screen. So thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon.